Thank you. Madam Public, oh, Madam Attorney General? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Quiet in the chambers, please. Everyone, please take their seats. And members, please take their seats. Quiet in the chambers, please. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Present. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Present. Espinal. Eugene. Gibson. Jonai. Present. Grudenchik. Holden. Kalos. King. Present. Ku. Kozlowitz, Lansman, Lander, Here. Levin, Here. Borelli, Here. Thank you. Kalos, Here. Levine, Here. Mizell, Here. Menchaca, Miller, Present. Moya, Perkins, Powers, here, Reynoso, Richards, Present, Eugene, Present. Rivera, Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Ulrich. Malone. Here. Van Bramer. Williams. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Torres. Here. Speaker Johnson. All quiet in the chambers. Please, please rise for the invocation. The, the invocation will be delivered by Pastor Bishop Earl W. McKay from the Church of God of Prophecy, located at 85 East 165th Street in the Great Borough of the Bronx. Quiet in the chambers. Great. Thank you. Great and gracious God, we come before you today with grateful hearts, saying thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for preserving us through the night, for waking us up this morning to see another day. Out of gratitude, we desire to do your will today. And so we ask that you grant guidance to all who by providence are assembled here today. Guide this illustrious council that you have selected, elected and called out from among the populace to serve this great city of New York. Grant each council person discernment and discretion in all their discussions and deliberations and decisions. Grant that 
in these difficult times, discussions and deliberations will be done with utmost dignity and reciprocal respect. Grant each wisdom as they seek to serve with equity the interest of each citizen, rich or poor, housed or homeless, powerful or powerless. And O oh Lord, do attend to their deepest personal needs and the needs of their families as they selflessly and sometimes thanklessly serve the needs of others. These favors we solicit of you with hopeful and grateful hearts. Amen. Mm. Motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. Council Member Gibson. Thank you very much, Madam Public Advocate. And I first and foremost want to congratulate you on your historic win. Um, you have been elected to serve in a higher capacity for such a time as this. And we want to congratulate you and wish you well um, in your new role. Thank God you. bless you. Good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon to all of my colleagues and guests today. I am so honored and privileged to have one of my pastors from my district, Bishop Earl McKay, who serves as the senior pastor of the Church of God of Prophecy, also known as the Bronx Church, located at 85 East 165th Street in our Claremont community. He recently celebrated his 30th year as pastor of this Bronx congregation after serving in a variety of other um, ministry roles throughout the state of New York. And I also want to recognize he is the pastor of the Church of God of Prophecy in Bermuda. And we thank you for your role in that bishop. Throughout his ministry and various outreaches, the Bronx Church has truly grown on every level and made a positive impact throughout our community. Every event that's hosted is purposefully designed around outreach with the goal of touching and elevating the lives of all of God's people and spreading the good news of the gospel. Whether it's through our annual tent crusade, Easter celebrations, voter registration drives, working on the 2010 census and now the 2020 census, conducting a summer day camp, administering a scholarship fund for our college-bound children in the church, the weekly food pantry, which serves lunch and dinner, serving over 1,200 residents per month, the partnership with the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to distribute health bucks, and supporting mental health awareness, the partnership with the 161st Street Merchants Association during the holidays we feed homeless families, as well as our back to school fair. In addition, the church has on-site HIV testing programs in partnership with the Momentum Project. Every program served at this church is designed to touch and transform lives. As a strong community advocate, Bishop McKay has also been appointed by the Bronx Borough President to serve as a community board member of Bronx Community Board 4. He served as 15 years as chair of the Housing and Land Use Com Committee. He served as an executive committee member as well. His other community involvements include a uh, clergy liaison to the NYPD. He's a partner with Bronx Health Reach, executive board member of Bronx HIV Network. He's a board member of Highbridge Community Development Corporation, and he served as the past president of the 44th Precinct Clergy Council. Bishop has many different roles, many different titles, but he is truly a man of God, a man of commitment, a man of conviction, a leader, teacher, and a preacher. And through his leadership, the Bronx Church promotes a strong emphasis on its overseas mission work by facilitating trips to Bermuda, to Dominica, to Haiti, and to Sierra Leone. Bishop McKay just came back from Bermuda just yesterday, and we are so grateful for Traveling Mercies to bring you here with us today. All of the partnerships with local organizations in the Caribbean island, the work around Hurricane Maria and the relief efforts that affected the Caribbean islands, as well as work in Africa. Bishop McKay holds a professional certificate in economic education for clergy from Russell Sage College in Albany, an associate degree with concentration in biblical studies from Berkshire Christian College, a bachelor's degree in theology from Malloy College, as well as he minored in sociology and history 
and he holds a master's degree in urban ministry from Alliance Theological Seminary in Nyack, New York. And in addition, most importantly, he has been married to his beloved first lady, Ella Aurora, who is our minister, Ella McKay, for 44 years, to God be the glory. And they are the proud parents of Christopher and Eleanor, who both, along with their daughter-in-law, Angela, labor them in the ministry in the church. And he is the proud grandfather of Andre, Christopher, and Micah. That is his biography in a short snippet, but truly, Bishop McKay represents so much more than his biography. He has made a difference. He has personally helped me on the Jerome Neighborhood Rezoning Plan, which affected our district for years to come. And I am grateful that Bishop McKay is here and has provided us with our opening prayer to begin our proceedings today. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you, Bishop McKay. May God bless you and continue your great work in ministry. And with that, I am proud to spread the invocation in full upon the record for today's proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member, and thank you, Bishop, for all the work that you have done. God bless you. Adoption of minutes? None. Messages and papers from the mayor? None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices? None. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? M114 through M116. Uh, coupled on a call-up vote, and at this time, I would ask for a roll call vote on all of today's land use call-ups. Quiet in the chambers. We're only voting on land use call-ups right now. Adams. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Barron. I vote aye on all. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. No. Aye. Cornegie. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. C. Si. Drum. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Gibson. I vote aye. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Um, with your permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call ups, a couple items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. Yes. Um, before I vote, I do just want to add to the record, um, I want to urge my colleagues, we've been in a real struggle and negotiating, making sure that we comply with the law that each borough has an animal shelter. After a number of conversations with my district, I just want to let my constituents know that we did the best effort from the mayor's office to the speaker's office to make sure that this animal shelter is delivered as well as other services that get delivered, not only for the 12th district, but the Bronx. And as elected leaders in the council, we have a responsibility to educate our constituents even if they don't understand. And I think the mayor's office as well as the speaker's office and myself would be able to deliver that to our constituents. So I'm thankful again for everyone who helped make this happen. Raj, you and the whole land you staff, I want to say thank you for your help and your guidance and us being able to deliver and, and complying with the law that every animal, that every borough has an animal shelter. As I said earlier, we all go to hospitals and, and human beings go to hospitals. Now we have a place that we can take our best friends, our pets in the borough of the Bronx, a full animal care um, center. So with that being all said, I say thank everyone again today and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Koo. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Uh, aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Mizell. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Aye on all. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye on all. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Aye. Traeger. Ulrich. Mizell. Valone. Aye and all. Van Bramer. Aye. Williams. Uh, with permission, I'd like to vote on all the land use call ups and a couple of items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. Yes. Thank you. I vote aye and all. Thank you. Jaeger. Aye. 
Matteo. Combo. About I. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Quiet in the chambers. Quiet in the chambers as we now hear from the speaker, Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Good afternoon. I want to thank you all for being here on this cold Wednesday. We have a busy agenda today, but I want to begin by acknowledging a tragedy that happened in our country last week, something that happens way too often. A gunman opened fire at the Borderline Barn Grill in Thousand Oaks, California. Most of the victims were college students with promising futures ahead of them. One of them was a police sergeant responding to the horror that day. Another survived, one of the victims survived the mass shooting in the Las Vegas Strip a year earlier, only to lose his life this time to gun violence. Our thoughts and prayers are, of course, with the victims and their friends, but again, saying thoughts and prayers is not enough. We need gun control, and we need it now. I would like to honor those 12 victims, Sergeant Ron Hellis, Noel Sparks, Dan Manrique, Justin Meek, Elena Housley, Telemachus Orfanos, Cody Kaufman, Sean Adler, Mark Meza Jr., Blake Dingman, Jacob Dunham, and Christina Morissette. I also want us to acknowledge the wildfires that have been ravaging the state of California. It is still ongoing but already 48 people have been confirmed dead, with many more folks missing. It has been a tough couple of weeks for California, and we want them to know that we are praying for them. We also lost someone here closer to home, Cam Lau, a school bus driver, who passed away in recent weeks. For all of these tragedies, I'd ask everyone here to take a moment of silence and to please rise. Thank you. Uh, now jumping into our docket for the day, the council will vote on the following land use, following finance items, three pre-considered resolutions amending the property tax rates for fiscal year 2019, restating and amending the property tax rates that were set in June at budget adoption to implement state legislation lowering the class share cap from 5% to 0.5%. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Dr. Raymond Majeski, Emery Adev, and Davis Winslow from the Finance Division. Introduction 1144, sponsored by our finance chair, Danny Drum, at the request of the mayor, authorizing 14 business improvement districts across the city to increase their annual bid assessments. Two pre-considered resolutions, setting November 28th at 10 a.m. as the date and time for the public hearing to consider a local law to establish the Throgs Neck bid in Council Member Mark Jonai's district, and a local law to expand and increase the annual assessment at the Hudson Square bid in my council district. I want to thank the finance staff who worked on these bid items, Rebecca Chasen, Noah Brick, and Stephanie Ruiz. The council will vote on the following land use items. The council will vote on the following land use items. Uh, 2050 Bartow Avenue, approval of a site selection for a full service adoption center and veterinary medical clinic in council member Andy King's district. Uh, I, I really, really am excited about this. Council member uh, Valone and I uh, worked and his family worked for many years on getting full service animal shelters in all five boroughs. Council member Valone passed a bill requiring that there be full service uh, animal shelters in all five boroughs. And so today is a step in that process. Uh, 
uh, in getting this Bartow site done. It wasn't easy. I know that Councilmember King was balancing um, some local issues with also trying to get this done, and I'm really grateful that we did this. It's going to be a state-of-the-art center, which is going to be very important for the Borough of the Bronx. 599 Cortland, it's an application for a small development in our land use chair, Rafael Salamanca's district. St. Michael's Park rezoning, it's a series of applications to facilitate the expansion of a cemetery in Council Member Constantinese's district. The Second Amendment to the Coney Island Amusement Park Special Process Agreement. It's going to add properties to the existing interim amusement park area to eventually be mapped as parkland in Council Member Traeger's district. Hebrew Home for the Age, a special permit to facilitate the development. Uh, of a new continuing care retirement community with 388 independent senior living units in Council Member Andy Cohen's district. I know he has spent an enormous amount of time on this for many, many years, and it has been complicated uh, and difficult, and uh, it may not be getting a lot of play today, but he has spent uh, literally years working on this, and so I want to congratulate you, Andy, uh, for getting this done. I know it's a big deal. I want to thank our land use staff, Amy Levitan, Julie Lubin, Jeff Campagna, John Douglas, and Jeff Yoon. Moving on, the council will vote on the following pieces of legislation today. Introduction 1137A, sponsored by Councilmember Adrian Adams, would codify into the charter the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Malcolm Butehorn, Irene Pirovsky, Patrick Mulvihill, and Sebastian Bachi. Introduction 376B, sponsored by Councilman Richie Torres, will require the Department of Youth and Community Development to conduct outreach informing as many youth as practicable about the availability of bullying awareness and prevention resources, including those that are providing counseling, mental health resources, mobile texting or internet chat functionality, and referrals. The bill would also require the Department of Education to distribute to students information regarding any existing online portal operated by the Department of Education through which students or their parents may report bullying, harassment, intimidation, or discrimination. DYCD would also provide information regarding DOE's portal of youth participating in its program. I want to congratulate you, uh, Councilmember Torres, on this important piece of legislation. I want to thank the staff who worked on it, Smita Deshmukh and Paul Senegal. Uh, next, in recognition of uh, Veterans Day, uh, the council will vote on several bills, all sponsored by Council Member Eric Ulrich, that would create comprehensive resources and services for our city's veterans. Our veterans have sacrificed so much for our country and they continue to do so, and we owe it to them to ensure that they are taken care of and that we as a city are doing everything we can to protect and serve them. Introduction 391A would require the Department of Veterans Services to provide benefits, counseling services, to veterans seeking assistance with federal, state, and city benefits that they may be entitled to based on their military service. The department would be required to provide counseling services in at least one location per borough and at each newly created Veterans Resource Center. Introduction 394A would require the department to create, official, to create an official Veterans Resource Center in each borough no later than June 1, 2019, and to provide benefits counseling services. Additionally, the Department of Veterans Services would be required to provide a minimum of 20 hours of in-field and office service to veterans in each borough per week. And lastly, Introduction 396A would require the Department of Veterans Services to create a Veterans Resource Guide with information on benefits available to veterans and their family members to provide information on laws affording special rights and privileges to veterans, protections and remedies given, the vet given to veterans under the New York City human rights laws, available physical and mental health programs and resources, educational and training opportunities, and available sources of low or no, co or no cost legal assistance. I want to thank Councilmember, I want to congratulate Councilmember Ulrich, and I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Nasu Chowdhury, Michael Kurtz, Zach Harris, Smita Deshmukh, Andrea Vasquez, 
Gomez and Zay Emanuel Halu. Finally, we're going to vote on a series of bills uh, related to the for hire vehicle industry. Introduction 304A, sponsored by Transportation Chair Idanis Rodriguez, would establish a taxi medallion task force. Introduction 1062A, sponsored by Councilmember Barry Grudenchik, would require drivers for high volume for hire vehicle services to be paid for trips even when the payment transaction fails, for example, because the payment provider does not complete the transaction. Introduction 1068A, sponsored by Council Member Steve Levin, would require the Taxi and Limousine Commission and the Department of Consumer Affairs to engage in financial outreach and education to taxi and for hire vehicle drivers. Introduction 1079A, sponsored by Councilmember Donovan Richards, would create the Office of Inclusion within the Taxi and Limousine Commission. The office would compile and report statistics relating to driver demographics and discrimination against passengers and address issues relating to racism and discrimination in the taxi and for hire vehicle industries. I want to thank uh, Councilmember Richards. He brought this up as part of our conversation and debate on uh, Uber and for hire vehicles uh, this past summer. It was an important conversation. It's one that we need to have, and I am grateful we are moving on this bill today that he proposed uh, back then. Introduction 1081A, sponsored by Councilman Rafael Salamanca, would require the Taxi and Limousine Commission to provide assistance to drivers, including mental health counseling, financial counseling, and referrals to outside organizations for additional assistance. And introduction 1096A, sponsored by our Four Hire Vehicles Committee Chair, uh, Reverend Ruben Diaz Sr. will require that high volume for hire vehicle uh, companies as part of their new licensing requirement, they would need to affirm that they will not administer any automatic deductions for vehicle payments from driver pay unless the deduction is optional and chosen by the driver. I want to thank the chair for seeing all these bills through his committee. Uh, and I want to thank the staff who worked on these bills, James DiGiovanni, uh, Audrey Son, uh, Nell Beekman, uh, Malik Nasseruddin, Tirza Nasser, Emily Rooney, and Rick Arbello. That concludes our stated agenda for uh, today, and I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Uh, thank you, and stay warm this evening. And it is good to see you up there, Madam Public Advocate. Thank we don't you. have much time left together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Discussion of general orders. Seeing none, report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Finance, Intro 1144, Business Improvement Districts. Couple of general orders. Preconsidered Resos 612 and 613, Class Shares. Couple of general orders. Preconsidered Resos 614, Property Taxes. Couple of general orders. Preconsidered Resos 615 and 616, Throgs Neck and Hudson Square Bids. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Four Higher Vehicles, Intros 304A, 1062A, and 1068A, Sale Prices, Risk of Loss, and Financial Education for Taxi Cabs. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intros 1079A, TLC Office of Inclusion. Amended and coupled to general orders. Intros 1081A and 1096A, Driver Assistance Services. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 231 and Reso 623, Bronx Animal Shelter. Coupled on general orders. LU 241 and Reso 624 through LU 243 and Reso 626, 599 Cortland Avenue. Coupled on general orders. LU 250 and Reso 627 through LU 252 and Reso 629, St. Michael's Park. Couple of general orders. LU 253, Hebrew Home. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B uh, of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. <clears throat> Excuse me. LU 254 and Reso 630, Coney Island Amusement Park. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Technology, Intro 1137A, Office of Data Analytics. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Veterans, intros 391A, 394A, and 396A, Veteran Resource Centers. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Youth Services, intro 376B, Bullying Prevention. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, intro 720, Site Safety Training. Laid over. LU 253 and Reso 631, Hebrew Home. Couple general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled on general orders, and at this time, I would ask for roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Quiet in the chambers, please. Adams. Adams. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. 
Uh, Madam Public Advocate, congratulations to you. Thank you. Uh, on your victory as our historic next Attorney General of New York State. Congratulations to thank you. you. I'd like to thank the members of the Technology Committee for unanimously approving my legislation. Intro 1137A, this is a bill that codifies into the New York City Charter the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics, which is New York City's Civic Intelligence Center. While the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics was created by Executive Order 306 under Mayor Michael Bloomberg, we must ensure that this office survives successive mayoral administrations for years to come, and I encourage my colleagues to approve this and support this important piece of legislation today. Congratulations to all of my colleagues who will pass bills today, especially to Councilmember King for enduring a difficult process to pass the vote, which was before my committee, to create a full service animal shelter in the great borough of the Bronx. Thank you to my colleagues once again for your support on my legislation. I do vote aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I rise today for an introduction. I would like to introduce to the body Wanda Pope Ewart. Ms. Pope Ewart has worked for New York City since 1994. She's employed by the New York City Human Resources Administration in their Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, also known as SNAP. She's a Principal Administrative Associate Level 1. Her duties include, but are not limited to training staff when needed, keeping staff updated about changes on policies and procedures within the SNAP program, approving time and leave, reviewing, approving, and disapproving cases for benefit, and supervising staff. So I have a very uh, capable, mature person as an intern. She's in her last semester at the College of New Rochelle. She's completing her master's in public administration. And in 2011, she obtained, she obtained her bachelor's degree from the College of New Rochelle in liberal arts with a concentration in psychology. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Borelli. Aye on all except preconsidered resos 612, 613, and 614. Brennan. Thank you. Cabrera. Aye. Thank you. Chin. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. First of all, congratulations, Madam Public Advocate. Look forward to working with you as our new state attorney general. And I also want to thank the Finance Committee for supporting two of my bids, uh, the Chinatown bid and the Lower East Side bid, on their requests uh, for increasing the assessment. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Cohen. Madam Attorney General-elect, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, I just really want to express my profound gratitude to the Land Use Division, specifically Raja Mann, Amy Levitan, Julie Lubin, and Jeff Yoon uh, for the tremendous amount of time that they spent uh, holding my hand and walking me through uh, the Hebrew home expansion. Uh, and I will say that the, 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 this project has gone through a tremendous amount of evolution from its inception to this day, uh, including the preservation of 90% of the developable site will be preserved as open space. So only using 10% of the land. Uh, and again, it was an enormous amount of work and the land use division really uh, proved its mettle and, and had my deep appreciation. And thank you to the speaker's office for all their support. And I encourage my colleagues to vote aye. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Konstantinidis. Aye on all. Thank you. Cornegy. Thank you. Deutsch. Yeah, permission to explain my votes? Yes. Yeah, first I'd like to uh, congratulate um, um, but I'd like to congratulate you. This is the first time that we have uh, Attorney General presiding over the City Council, so congratulations on that. Uh, and also, I want to congratulate my colleague uh, Eric Ulrich on the three bills, uh, on the three veteran bills that is being passed today. And I want to thank uh, Eric for all the work that he has done and continues to do on behalf of our veterans. Uh, I and all. Thank you, Matteo. Uh, no one 612, 613, 614, I and the rest, I want to congratulate my colleague Eric Ulrich on his passage of veterans uh, bills. Thank you. Thank you. Diaz. Permission to split my vote? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Madam Chair, lady, and ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity as a Puerto Rican, uh, born in Bayamón, Puerto Rico, to thank all of you and the speaker and all of you that went to Puerto Rico to show you support for our island and the need that we are having in Puerto Rico. 
Thank you very much, especially to those of you that went to schools to paint and to help build some uh, buildings and giving help to Puerto Rico. And thank you very much to all of you. And I would like to express my appreciation to the members of the For Hire Committee for the wonderful job and the support that they have given and to the speaker for supporting our committee and to my counsel, Christopher Lean, who has done a wonderful job. And Madame, ladies and gentlemen, I vote I on all and I be the same. Thank you. Did you Dr say a Vita Zing? <coughs> Drum. Aye. Thank you. Espinel. Aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Thank you. Gibson. Congratulations, colleague. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Joan Aye. Aye on all except 612, 613, and 614. Grudenchik. Aye on all. Holden. Aye on all. Kalos. Permission to explain? Yes. Uh, Tish, we have been so lucky here in the city to have you as our advocate, and now we have to share you with the state as our attorney, and uh, I look forward to having you represent us. Uh, being our attorney and suing the hell out of Trump, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ditto. <laughs> Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Thank you. Lan Lansman. Aye. Thank you. Lander. Levin. Commissioner, explain my vote? Yes. Uh, I want to vote aye on all and uh, to our Attorney General elect, in the words of my daughter Frances, go Tish. <laughs> Thank you, Franny. Yes. Uh, congratulations, uh, Tish. We will miss you here um, at the City Council. Uh, we wish you all the best and are very um, proud uh, uh, to see all the great work that you'll be doing on behalf of all of New York State. Thank you. Aye on all. Thank you, Steve. Levine. A big ditto on that and I on all. Thank you. Mizell. Yes. <laughs> Menchaca. I on all. Miller. Madam Public Advocate, I'd like to add my congratulations and, and just know that you will continue to make us proud in all your future endeavors and I feel safe for already. And we do have a, a, a list in Southeast Queens that we know we're going to get done, right? And, and all that predatory stuff. And we're so excited. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Moya. Aye on all. Thank you. Perkins. Aye on all and all the best. Thank you. Powers. Aye on all and congratulations. Thank you. Reynoso. I vote aye on all and congratulations. Thank you. Richards. Uh, Congratulations, DJ. Still waiting for his pancakes. Um, to come up, but, but he uh, certainly want to congratulate you on uh, rising to the occasion and, and for making uh, history in New York State. And with that being said, I also just want to uh, thank the speaker, uh, Jason Goldman, um, uh, Jordan Gibbons, my legislative director, and uh, Council James D. Giovanni for their work on the Office of Inclusion. And with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Rivera. Aye on all. Thank you. Rodriguez. Rose. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. I'm so proud, Tish. Much love. Um, and uh, I vote aye on all except for pre-considered resolutions 612, 613, and 614. Thank you. Ro Rosenthal. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Congratulations, Madam Attorney General. Thank you, Helen. That's pretty cool. Um, that's really great. It means a lot. You're a role model for a lot of women. Thank you. And I uh, really appreciate you and wish you much success Thank in you. your position serving the public. Thank you. How do you vote? No, I'm not done. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I also want to congratulate Councilmember Adams on her bill for uh, Office of Data Analytics. You're, you're speaking to my heart. 
So um, I think this is great, the transparency that'll come from this. I really appreciate the work that you've done on this. And Council Member Drum, um, you already know, but I'm really ecstatic about the fact that we were able to lower the, um, the tax, tax rate cap from 0.5% uh, to 0.05%, if I have that right. So thank you very much for that. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rodriguez. Would like to say something about the bills. My, yes. So I, I believe that, again, the bill that, with the support of Speaker Johnson, my colleague, we've been able to, super, to uh, vote today the one that will create a medallion task force will be very important because what it does is it recognizes the level of crisis uh, that have been taking so many drivers to commit suicide. The yellow taxi crisis didn't happen overnight. We promised decades ago that they will be the only one that will have the exclusive right to pick up and drop out in any corners of our city. But the rule changed, and many of those 6,000 individual medallion owners, many of them who live in Queens, live in Brooklyn, different, different places, they saw how the medallion value went down. A lot of those hardworking middle class they use the value of the medallion to get into loan, to buy the houses, to send the kids to college. Now those medallion value went down to $125,000 in average. So we believe, I believe that by voting this independent task force, we will have a great opportunity that after a few months, they will come back to us with recommendation on how we can deal with the crisis that is affecting the yellow medallion a industry in our city. So with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Salamanca. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. First, I would like to congratulate you, um, Madam Attorney General-elect. Uh, today, we'll be voting on intro uh, 1081, which is a direct response to the recent uh, tragedies of six New York City taxi drivers who committed suicide this past year. For months, the city council debated the merits around the ride sharing, but one of the unintended consequences was how severe these financial, emotional, and physical burdens would be on the drivers themselves. The stigma around mental health illness is very real, and it cannot be understated just how important it is to not only bring awareness around it, but also encourage people to seek out and receive the help that they need. By requiring the Taxi and Limousine Commission to provide their licensed driver assistance with financial counseling, mental health counseling, and more, my hope is that thousands of taxi drivers can finally gain some relief and know that there is help for them. This bill is for all cab drivers in New York who have been suffering in silence, not knowing how they are going to pay their debt, feed their family, or keep the roof over their head. One life lost to utter despair and hopelessness is too many. Today's passage is our city's way of taking action and doing something positive about it. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Torres. I vote aye. Thank you. Ulrich. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Yes. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Um, you know, I, I first want to begin by thanking you uh, for your extraordinary service to the city of New York. The state is going to benefit greatly from your leadership and from your example. Uh, being that we're voting on my veterans bills today, I just want to remind everybody or share with everybody um, how difficult the fight was to create the Department of Veterans Services and how long and hard we fought to bring that bill to fruition and to bring that agency into existence. And I remember early on one of the, the biggest supporters of the bill uh, was yourself, was you. And uh, you were standing on the steps literally in the cold with me and the advocates and just a handful of our colleagues when a lot of other folks probably thought that it would never happen and not only did it happen, but we're now passing bills which strengthen the support of services for veterans and expand the services for veterans. So on behalf of uh, the veterans community and the people who care about veterans, I want to thank you uh, for your advocacy, your friendship, your partnership, and your leadership on this very important issue. So thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. I want to thank uh, Speaker. Uh, Johnson, thank you very much for uh, bringing these bills to the floor, along with the, the chair, Chaim Deutsch, who's doing an incredible job. He really is uh, just taking that committee to the next level and passing a lot of important bills. And my good friend and colleague and my buddy here in the council, I think he 
Sometimes when I talk to him, he kind of tries to get away from me, doesn't want to get in trouble. But uh, Justin Brannon is a prime co-sponsor on the bill, uh, but he's fighting very hard for the veterans in New York City. I want to thank him for uh, being a prime co-sponsor on the bill. Uh, I went to the Veterans Day uh, parade in New York City. I was very happy. I, I just missed Margaret Chin, but she's always there, too. And um, I want to thank you, Margaret, for going. The veterans really appreciated it. They feel forgotten, uh, so many of them, especially our Vietnam veterans. And so anytime we can recognize or honor their service is a great thing. I want to thank the advocates. I thank all of my colleagues, all the, all the co-sponsors of the bills. It's a good thing what we're doing today. I'm voting aye on all with the exception of 612, 613, and 614, and aye on the rest. Thank you again. Thank, thank you. you. Malone. Madam Attorney General, a moment to explain my vote? Yes. I first want to thank uh, Speaker Corey Johnson to really helping us get to this point. I mean, decades and decades, the city's never had five full service animal shelters. Uh, to see that our Bronx colleagues stood together, got the right site, got the right plan for the Bronx is a, is a huge victory today. Uh, and now Queens will, will follow suit. We're hoping the site will be announced soon and we'll get to the same work there. Um, but that is a legacy we can be proud of because it was never accomplished before you became the speaker. So thank you for that. And the whole family thanks you for that. Um, and Eric and Hyam and Oli Hork on veterans, uh, very proud to see that day come forward. The work of the veterans was proud to co-sponsor that and, and, and see that committee grow today to where it is. Uh, and Alan, your hard work with your, it's a Jewish center. It's never easy when you have zoning and advocates fighting with each other, but you managed to pull that through. And uh, congratulations, everyone I say, Eye on all, except for resolutions, uh, no 612, 613, and 614. Thank you. Van Bramer. Permission to explain my vote. Yes. Uh, first, I, I vote aye on all the bills, and I, too, want to congratulate you personally. You. Um, but I also want to thank the speaker and all of the members of this body who either attended our rally in Long Island City today or who have expressed uh, support uh, for what is happening uh, not just to Long Island City, uh, but to the entire city, and not just my council district, but to the entire city council. Let's make no mistake, the deal that the governor and the mayor have entered into uh, is a bad deal for New Yorkers. And as was uh, loudly and really firmly stated today, uh, we're doing the wrong thing when we as a city are chasing billionaires and throwing billions of dollars at the richest men in the world, and then skirting a process that all of us would have had a role to play in, uh, just so they could make sure that the deal could not be stopped and evading meaningful uh, review. And the truth is, the more we learn of the deal, the worse it gets more and more information coming out every single day. So I just want to thank all the colleagues who uh, stood with me today at the rally and uh, others who couldn't be there but who have uh, expressed uh, their support for what we are going through. It is not just my struggle, it is our struggle. It is not just Long Island City's struggle, it is all of New York City's struggle. Uh, we, those of us who proclaim and call ourselves progressive Democrats, uh, have got to rethink the way that we handle and deal with billionaires and the richest men in the world who now even gets a helipad and doesn't even have to take the seven train like the rest of us, uh, is in a position to rake us over the coals. This is a bad deal for the city of New York, and I will continue to fight it. Thank you. Thank you. Jaeger. I on all, with the exception of resolutions 612, 613, and 614. Combo. I vote aye, and I'd like permission to explain my enthusiasm for our Attorney General Letitia James. This was something that I wrote very briefly um, following your primary win. And I said, you did it, we did it. Yes, your victory, our victory demonstrates that hard work, sacrifice, experience, dedication, and results 
are, do matter and are important. You showed that you can't just show up at churches and street corners come election time with fancy ad campaigns and win. You showed that polls that had you down by one percentage point were so purposefully racist that you beat the identified challenger by over 20 percentage points and they came in third place. You showed that when people who look just like you come out against you in support of challengers that can't hold a candle to your record of accomplishment, that you have the power to rise above it. Oh, and those newspapers that didn't endorse you but have been covering your victories for over two decades. Yes, they had to turn around and report in those same papers that despite their efforts to derail God's ordained plan, you still won. You show that when people doubt your abilities, you can pull out an army of women and enlightened men together that can hold you down, lift you up, and carry you across the victory line. From the time you announced your candidacy, I imagine standing next to you at your victory party when you declared the next New York Attorney General. I even knew what I would be wearing, <laughs> LOL. By the time I visited my last polling site and gave out flyers at Whitman houses, I was too tired. My little body gave way, and so Prince and I watched the numbers come in together, and we just cried and cried when your numbers came in. The world is now a different place because of your accomplishment. A new norm has been established, and new goals and bigger dreams can now be had in this new world. We love you, Letitia James, for your tireless effort and for your dedication and fight for the people that is honest and true from the heart. Your parents would be so proud. And I dedicate this poem to our next Attorney General, Letitia James, but I don't have enough time to read it, but it is Maya Angelou's Still I Rise. So we thank you, we're proud of you, we love you. Your accomplishment can't be described in words, but you have changed the world with your tireless dedication, and we love you, and Prince claims your victory all the way home. Thank you. <laughs> love you, thank you. Thank you. Did she vote? Speak, okay. Speaker Johnson. <laughs> All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of resolutions 612, 613, and 614, which were adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, seven negative, and zero abstentions. And the revised land use call-up vote is 49 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to the committee as indicated on today's agenda. Um, there is no resolution um, today, and so let's begin with general discussion. Council Member Gibson. Nice, I'm first. Thank you again, um, Madam Public Advocate, Madam Attorney General-elect. Um, I just wanted to share with my colleagues a couple of reminders. Um, tomorrow, I am proud to join with the Committee on Public Housing um, in hosting a joint hearing, the Subcommittee on Capital Budget. It is going to be focused on NYCHA's 2017 physical needs assessment here in the chambers at 10 a.m. Many of you know that based on the physical needs assessment, NYCHA's value of the amount of money needed to fully restore and invest in NYCHA is at $31.5 billion. So tomorrow's hearing, we will be talking to NYCHA and other organizations about how we tackle dealing with NYCHA. Also wanted to share with my colleagues that uh, city and state legislators of color have been working with the MIT Colab on worker cooperatives. Uh, there was a recent trip to Moldragon in Spain to look at many of the worker co-ops there in Spain and how we could replicate a lot of those practices here in New York. And we are hosting the first ever joint hearing of city and state legislators of color, a hearing on economic democracy for New Yorkers of color uh, next Tuesday, November 20th, here in the chambers at 6 p.m. It's the first ever. Members, if you are able, please join us. It's really going to be a very productive hearing talking about economic development and worker co-ops. And as I close in my last few seconds, Madam Public Advocate, I too want to join with all of my colleagues in really saluting you on this really historic victory. Uh, you have transformed the office of the public advocate. And for that, we are grateful. Um, not just the number of times you've sued the mayor and the governor, 
but the fact that you've always stood with us, with children, women, seniors, the LGBT community, uh, you have really stood firm. You've really supported a lot of us in so many ways, and we are grateful. The Office of the Public Advocate is an important part of government in holding city agencies accountable, and you have really transformed that office in the time you have served. So once again, I congratulate you. I look forward to working with you in your new capacity, and thank you for making the Office of the Public Advocate a different environment to work with and work in. God bless you. Thank you. Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you. I forgot to ask my intern to stand so that everyone would know who she is. So I want to ask Ms. Ewart if she would please stand so that you know who it is that I described when I talked about my intern. And uh, secondly, I just want to share the great news that Charles Barron and I just celebrated our 36th wedding anniversary. Yeah, 36 years. And you can only imagine what great fun we've had in 36 years, knowing Charles. We can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, sweetheart, I love you and look forward to another 36 years, God willing. Uh, to, to Madam uh, Attorney General-elect, wish you all the best. Look forward to having your voice there. And we know that people talk about the first, the first, the first. And it was 50 years ago that Shirley Chisholm was the first black woman to go to Congress. So in that same tradition, we're looking forward to you to be a trailblazer, to go forward, to be bold, to be unbought and unbossed like Shirley Chisholm was, and to uh, be that voice up in Albany. And you know there are already people there that you know, will be able to bolster you up in that regard. And finally, I just want to say that I think it was last Thursday, uh, a week ago Thursday, that we found out that there had been vandals who attacked the monument at the African burial ground. And I didn't hear about it until four days after it had occurred. But as soon as we heard about it, we contacted Reverend Daughtry and others December 12th who had been involved in making sure that the remains that were located when they were doing the excavation, that those remains were treated with dignity and respect. We stopped the building because they weren't going to stop. They were just going to take the bones and do whatever with them. But we forced them to stop, and we now have that tremendous monument. So as people are demonstrating their uh, lack of love for other people, we're going to continue to fight and make sure that we as black people are not marginalized and that our story continues to be told, and we want the media to give us the same kind of coverage when we are assaulted in those ways. Thank you. Thank you so much. Councilmember Rosenthal? Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, I rise today actually to talk about the Office of the Public Advocate and to um, to acknowledge that there's been a resolution introduced that would abolish the office. And um, I believe that's very short-sighted. I understand that it would be put to a vote, uh, but uh, as we've seen, call anything puppy dogs and apple pie and people vote yes. Um, I think that the Office of the Public Advocate is the only other citywide office to keep a check on the mayor. There's no doubt in my time in city government when I worked under the Koch, Dickens, and Giuliani administrations on the mayoral side that uh, until today that the power of the mayor's side is ginormous and you know we try so hard in this body to push back and to play a role, but if it weren't for the public advocate, if it weren't for the controller, and if it weren't for the Department of Investigation keeping an eye on what the mayor does, um, I think we would be worse off for it. I further believe that depending on who's elected to the position makes all the difference. And the voters play all of that role in deciding who's in there. If they want to choose somebody who's in there just to do a ceremonial 
job, that's what happens. It's not been my experience um, with either you, your predecessor, or your predecessor's predecessor that people have treated that office in that way. Instead, we have important lawsuits against the city. We have a, a continuously updated list of the 100 worst landlords which helps all of us in our district in our anti-eviction work. So um, I rise to speak against that resolution and um, will continue to speak against it as it moves through the legislative process. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Yeager. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, as many uh, in this chamber have acknowledged and as many as in our city and state have acknowledged, congratulations to you. Uh, Madam President, on an incredible victory, well-deserved victory, uh, recognition of your life in public service, and it's an honor that you deserve to have, uh, and the people of New York deserve to have it as well. Thank and I you. congratulate you. Today, I am introducing, as some here may have heard, uh, Introduction 1240, which would not abolish the Office of Public Advocate. Um, we don't have that power to do that, and I wouldn't say that we should if we did. It's to ask the voters the question of whether or not the experiment in which we've engaged for the last 30 years, creating this office with five occupants who have held it, should continue. Five people have held the office, fine New Yorkers, good public servants, some of them are my friends. There are a good number of people who are thinking about running for this office, future aspirants. A lot of them are my friends, some of them serve in this body, and they're good council members. They are two public advocates. It's not a question about whether or not we should abolish the office. It's a question of whether or not we should ask the voters. In an environment where, just a week ago, we asked the voters three very important questions. I did not support the adoption of either of any of them, but they passed. That's what we do. We ask voters sometimes when things are that important. We've created a charter revision commission here in this council, uh, together with the borough presidents and the controller and uh, Madam President, to ask voters a set of questions later uh, next year. That's what we're proposing. Um, I believe that after a 30-year experiment of an office which in many respects has done a lot of good work and surely in many respects the people who have held it have been incredible, not just human beings because I know them all and they're good people, but they've been incredible public servants in the work that they've done. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't ask the question to the voters and let them choose. And if they decide this makes sense, we continue. If they decide the office should have more power, continue it. If they decide something different, that's what we should abide by. Madam President, I'm wrapping up and I appreciate uh, the indulgence. It's, again, it's not, and I just want to make sure that I'm saying this on the floor of this body that I have so much respect for, um, that I walked in here as a 19-year-old years ago. It's not about anybody who holds the office. It's not about anybody who seeks the office. It's not about whether I think the office should exist, whether the co-sponsors of this legislation think the office should exist, whether anybody in this council thinks the office should exist. It's about whether we should offer the question to the people of New York and let them choose. Madam President, thank you again. And again, thank you for your service. Thank, thank you. you. Councilmember Grudenchik. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, I just want to uh, take this moment to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we kind of forget about this month because it's so early, but I certainly haven't forgotten. It's my favorite holiday. And uh, I, Councilwoman Barron, when she spoke about her 36 years of marriage, uh, reminded me that this is the month that my grandparents were married 111 years ago in Councilwoman Chin's district on East Broadway. So oh. Celia and Max, your grandson who you never met is in the New York City Council. Thank you all and congratulations to you, my public advocate. You're going to make a hell of an AG. Thank you, I appreciate it. Councilmember Machaca. Thank you, and I want to point you all to Resolution 608-609, uh, introduced today by the speaker and a whole bunch of our colleagues. Too often with the Trump administration's policies that we're hearing over and over again throughout these last two years, we're inclined to react with outrage and fear rather than proactively reach for every tool at our disposal here in the city. These resolutions are an important step in that direction. Right. The Speaker uh, and Chair Levine and Levin and myself will keep pushing on public charge, uh, which these two resolutions speak on, but I want to leave you with one key message, that submitting a public comment is one critical way we can push back on this really unjust policy. 
It matters because the federal government is obligated to review every response, and so we're asking every council member to slow this process down by sending your unique comment and bring your communities to send their unique comments. We are trying to hit the, the goal of 100,000 public comments. We're already reached 50,000 public comments across the Federal Register uh, throughout the country. 17 added last night at a town hall in the Bronx. Uh, and I'm calling on each and every one of you to do that work. We'll be in touch with you and your offices. We want to work with the, the delegations to bring every borough uh, forward to make sure that we can have plans. December 10th is the last time that we can submit a comment that will, again, have to be reviewed if they're unique uh, one by one by the federal agencies. I want to end with this final remark. The Trump administration's assault on our values and identity as a sanctuary city has taught me and all of you here how critical it is that we adopt a proactive rather than a reactive stance on immigration. And now with this Democratic majority in the state Senate, uh, I believe that we can have a unique opportunity to reshape that social safety net at the city and the state level to be more comprehensive. That's the work that we're going to do. We're going to have a public hearing on Thursday, and I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Council Member Holden. Madam Public Advocate, just, sure. just quickly, I, I just want to really highlight uh, what Council Member Chaka said for the members who are still here. This proposal, and I think it's very important for every single one of us to email our constituents and let them understand, this proposal could affect uh, almost half a million uh, immigrants in New York City and deny them SNAP benefits and other public benefits which they qualify for. These are folks who are trying to get permanent residency or a green card in New York City who have always been entitled to these benefits. And this is very draconian. We've already seen a huge number of people uh, not enrolling in programs they qualify for because of fear. And it's actually going to, besides being immoral, it's going to cost the city a tremendous amount of money. Uh, by folks not being able to participate in these programs. So Council Member Chaka has been an extraordinarily, I believe, national leader uh, on talking about immigration in his time as chair, following our great chair, Danny Drum, in that position. And uh, I really just want to highlight the work he's done and the importance of this. And I, I think you want to go to Council Member Holden, uh, and he wants to change your vote. So I know he has to ask for unanimous consent. Yeah, I request a unanimous consent of the council. I'd like to change my vote to no on 612, Reso 612, 613, and 614. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Lander. Thank you, Madam Attorney General-elect. First, uh, both Rosa and Marek asked me to convey their heartfelt and deep congratulations to you, and they remind me of the time that you have been their uh, advocate in so many cases, and they feel very lucky that the people of New York, all the people of New York State, have you fiercely defending our interests now. We could not be luckier, uh, and they wanted me to extend their deepest, deepest wishes to you. Thank you. Um, I'm proud today that uh, we are together introducing some legislation. I want to call people's attention to Reso 1231. Uh, to take some next steps in improving uh, our campaign finance rules and further restricting independent expenditures. So thank you for taking leadership on that. Um, your leadership as public advocate has indeed been uh, fierce and I think is evidence for why that office is one that we should keep. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Koslowitz. Thank you. In, 19, in 1988, I worked for the president of the city council when we had the Board of Estimates. It's a long time ago, but now that title is the Public Advocate. And I have to say that the Public Advocate is a very important position for New York City because there goes against, what, if they don't like what the mayor does, it will go against them. The people have Nobody complains about the public advocate. And I know when I worked for the president of the city council, we got thousands of calls from people looking for help. We had a senior hotline that people called and any other. I know that I was the Queen's liaison for the president and I used to go out to different communities I remember going to Long Island City when at that time they didn't let me go by myself because it was dangerous. 
going out and looking for things that we brought back to the president, and he fought the mayor at that time. It was Ed Koch was the mayor, and after Ed Koch, it was David Dinkins. And everybody got along fine, and the people vote. They go out to vote. If they didn't want the public advocate, they just would leave that blank. So I think the public advocate does a great job. This public advocate did a great job. I hope the next public advocate works just as hard as this public advocate, and we will know that we have a great public advocate. And I also want to wish you the best. You are great. I've watched you be a council member, and then the public advocate, and now the attorney general. I am very proud of you. I'm older than you, so I could say that. I am just very, very proud of you. I watched you grow. And let's continue the public advocate. Thank you. Thank you so much. In fact, uh, council member, if you count up all of the cases that we have handled of the four sponsors of the bill, we've handled over 4,589 constituents from four of the sponsors. And I've got all of the zip codes and all of the uh, constituents that we've helped from their respective districts. Our last speaker is Council Member Cornegie. He's our last speaker. <laughs> I better be profound then. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Madam uh, Attorney General elect. Um, as many of you know, I measure the progress of this city and my colleagues in the ages and growth of my children. And I can remember as a councilwoman, you holding Nyla in your arms and then her holding you around your knees and then around your waist, and as a public advocate around your shoulders and her now looking down on you <laughs> while simultaneously looking up at you. So I want to thank you for the impact that you've had on my girls as they've watched your ascent uh, to, to leadership. Um, I did want to just mention uh, my, my third party transfer uh, town hall that's being held tomorrow at, um, at uh, Brooklyn Law School. Um, it's important that uh, the town hall event will feature an informational panel from 6.30 to 7.30, including representatives from several stakeholders in the TPP program. They include the City Department of Housing Preservation and Development that oversees the program, three organizations who receive properties through the program, Neighborhood Restore, Urban Homesteading Assistance, and Impact Brooklyn, as well as Center for New York City Neighborhoods. Um, this is in an attempt to have, in addition, attendees will be able to receive on-site assistance with everything from outstanding municipal arrears, tax liens, water bills, foreclosure prevention assistance, resolving building violations, and more from the following agencies and organizations in an effort to get those who have found themselves in the TPP process either removed uh, by curing their violations or by entering into agreements with the various agencies uh, as a process. So it's a very unique kind of town hall, very short panel, and then the opportunity to break out into rooms and deal with uh, any violations that people may find themselves in to help uh, kind of cure some of what we're seeing in minority communities primarily across the city with the, the controversial third party transfer program. Thank you. That's tomorrow at Brooklyn Law School at 6.30. And lastly, an amended tally, um, resolution 612, 613, and 614, which, was, uh, which were adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, eight in the negative, and zero abstentions. Mr. Speaker, to close. I want to wish everyone uh, a happy Thanksgiving uh, in advance. We all have a lot to be grateful for uh, as elected officials who get to be of service to the city that we love and the people that we get to uh, serve every single day. I want to remind folks that uh, next week uh, we are going to be having an oversight hearing on the Board of Elections and what happened on Election Day. So folks should come to that hearing. Uh, if you heard about issues in your district or saw it, uh, come. We're going to have the Board of Elections here. We want council members to participate in a meaningful way before the next legislative session starts in Albany to push for voting reforms and hopefully structural changes at the Board of Elections. Uh, and with that, today's stated meeting of November 14th, 2018 is hereby adjourned.